Jesus didn't just breathe on the disciples 2,000 years ago. Every time you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, God Every time you forgive, God. And every time you hate, you're suffocating your spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I want you to open your Bibles, please, to the book of Psalms and chapter 51. Amen. Psalm 51, verse 11, was written when he was found out to be an adulterer. And he says in verse number 11, Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Read it with me again. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Put your hands to heaven. Say it again with me, eyes closed. I'll lead you along. Say, cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. That word that was written in the Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew. And that Hebrew word for Holy Spirit, listen to me, is the word ruach. It's spelt R-U-W-A-C-H. Say ruach. ruach. Now let me read it to you as it was originally written. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not your holy breath from me. Ruach. If a person, if anyone in this room today stopped breathing, you would be dead. If anyone in this room stops breathing, your life will expire. When a person stops breathing, the body gives up the spirit. For some, look at me, for some, it's a spirit to eternal glory, and for some, it's a spirit to eternal hell. It is the breath that gives a person the animation. It animates them. It is lack of breath which shuts down the body's ability to be animated. Now listen to this. Listen to this, what the Holy Spirit showed me the other day. I'm going to show you how I'm going to tie this in for you. Because this message this morning is entitled, Come Alive. Come Alive. There is nothing more heartbreaking than dead, dead, lifeless, empty Christians. They're dead. They've lost their vitality. They've lost their animation. Now pay attention. This is really powerful. It is not the loss of air which kills them. It's the movement of air. It's not the loss of air, it's the movement of air. Are you with me? Yes. Be dear Jesus, Lord, I pray all of the people watching me pay attention. How many people in the last 45 minutes have thought about your breathing? We just do it. Because it keeps us alive and we don't Think about it. Now, let's look at this scripture again. 
Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy... No, no, no. Let's replace it with Ruach. Come on, read it again. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy breath from me. In the same amazing way God wants us to relate the involuntary breathing that we do to sustain our bodies and in the same way to keep us spiritually alive. Your spiritual survival depends on how well you spiritually breathe. Your spiritual survival does not depend on the fancy church that you belong to or the fancy hat that you wear. Listen to me. Look, look, look. Your spiritual survival, and David knew this well in Psalms 51, his spiritual survival depended on whether or not he was breathing He did not want God to take away the breath from him. In the Garden of Eden, the Bible tells us that Adam was created. He made him from the dust of the ground. And the Bible tells us then God breathed in Adam the Ruach. In the same way, without the breath of God, the breath the breath of God, the breath of God, right? Without the breath of God, man is spiritually dead. Now, the breath of God is not a legalistic formula. So read it again. Now, remember, I must must give you this foundation. David had just been discovered to have been an adulterer. And he knew that as a result of his sin, he was about to lose his child, was going to die. And was going to lose his throne. And as a result of this sin, he sat down and penned this. And he said, whatever you do, Lord, don't take the breath of God away from me. Three 178 times in this Bible, the word spirit, not ruach, is used. Are you paying attention? But 140 times, not in the King James Version, the word ruach, meaning wind, is used. So without spiritual breath, one will die. David knew that. Lord, don't take your presence from me. And please do not take the breath of God from me. He didn't want to be a dead, a dead duck. David said, please, if you take your holy wind from me, I will spiritually die. Please, Holy Spirit, don't suffocate me. In the book of Job, in the book of Job, not Job, not Job, but Job, chapter 33 and verse number 4. Come on, read this with me. Job 33 and verse 4. Read it with me. The stop. The the what? The word ruach, which is the the breath of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty has given me life, spirit, life, worship, church, spirit, life. In the spirit, amen? 
Look at this was no accident naming this church. In the spirit there is Ruach. And where there is Ruach, where there is life, there is what? Worship. Worship. There's no dead ducks here this morning. Amen. 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 I said there were no dead ducks here this morning. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has given me life. He has animated me. He has filled my innermost being with the character and presence of God. Whatever you do, Lord, you can take my house. You can take my cars. You can take my family. You can take my money. But please don't take thy holy ruach from me. Please don't take that from me. Yeah. What is the ruach of the Spirit? It's the very breath. It's the very innermost outpouring of God's presence. It is the breath of God. Now, for some people, I've been told, they get very turned off when I minister to people and I breathe on them. Now, that might be because I might have bad breath at that time. I don't know. That's why I always pair, you know, where I always have gum in my pocket, you know. But some people look at me and they go, what is he blowing on those people for? It comes as natural to me. I don't even think about it. It comes as natural to me. I blew, I blew the breath of God on Mavis in her room. I did. I went up to her, if you remember. I went up to her and went... Oh, yes, I did. I know the power of that breath. I had my gun on me too, Mavis, by the way. You should try it sometime, but make sure you got gum. You should try it sometime. It's the innermost, innermost presence of God. The outflow of of God. Now, the first time you breathe on somebody, again, make sure you have some good, strong gum. But second, watch what happens. You feel like a fool. <laughs> Look at Genesis 2 7. In Genesis 2 7, the Lord God formed man of the, the what? What does that word dust mean? The world. He formed man of the world, of the dust of the ground. Before you were born again, you were dust. Can, you, can I hear an amen? amen? Are you with me? Amen. Before you were filled with the Holy Spirit, you were dead duck. You were religious. You were nothing. You were empty. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And what did he do? Breathe. Ah, wait a minute. He ruach. And his what? And the... Breath of the what? The spirit. spirit. And man then became born again. Are you with me? He became born again that day. And without it, Adam was dead. Before you met the Holy Spirit, are you awake and listening? Are you awake and listening? Or do I just have to go home and preach to the mirror this morning? Before you met the Holy Spirit, you were dead. Amen. Stood in your church like a dead, lifeless, empty duck. <laughs> Remember? Amen. And then one day, you came to this crazy little church. And the pastor of the church did something that no other pastor has ever done to me before. And he breathed on me. Right? And you became a living soul. Just this morning, not only was Mavis's testimony just incredible, but... During this little meet and greet time, 
I get people coming up to me, as you can see, and they give me their reports. <laughs> Just a couple of reports this morning. We came to your service, and my God, the Holy Spirit, something happened. This changed, that changed. And there's a smile, and there's laughter, and there's joy, and there's hope, and there's animation. It's life, spirit, life, spirit, life. And worship is wonderful, and, and the presence of God is glorious. And David did not want God to take that breath because without the breath of God for David and without the breath of God for Adam, he was a dead, lifeless duck. Amen. Quack, 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 quack. <laughs> now, what's so important? Now, I want you to understand something. God did not make it difficult, but religion has complicated things so much. God made it so simple. If you stop breathing, you die. Simple? Yes. I said simple? Yes. Spiritually, if you stop spiritually breathing, you die spiritually. And you're called a dead man walking. A dead man walking with no life in you at all. And you come to church dragging your body with you. And God is not pleased because that is not what his Holy Spirit does you alive he energizes you he fills you with his love he fills you with his joy he makes you want to worship he makes you want to forgive he makes you want to just jump and shout and sing oh happy days huh amen that's what happens well that's not what we do at our church pastor i feel like i'm Im imitating here The wind, the wind, the wind, the wind, the wind. So, so, so Wednesday night as I'm teaching, Wednesday night as I'm teaching, and I realized the first thing, the very first thing that Jesus did, the very first thing that he did is he appeared in the middle of a room. Remember that? First thing that he did, he, he reunites his spirit with his body. He now has a glorified body. Amen? And what does he do? Boop! He appears in the middle of a room where the disciples are. What does he say? And what does he do? If you go outside and you decide that you want to take a sailboat ride, right? Anybody been on a sailboat? And you're sitting in the middle of this lake, right? And you decide that you want to go there. But the wind is blowing there. And you put up that sail. If the wind is blowing this direction, in which direction will the boat be taken? Where the wind goes. And this is the tragedy of the Christian. But I want to go there. No. Now, if you want to go there, it'll require a motor and gasoline called self-effort. Are you with me? Throw the motor in the water and say, where you lead me, I will follow. If you lead me, I will follow. If you lead me, I will follow. That's what it's all about with the Holy Spirit. When you lose, look up here. When you lose self, he will carry you. When you have self, you oppose him. You know, the secret of the Holy Spirit, and I say secret and a mystery, is because up here you cannot understand what I'm telling you. When, when the Lord rose from the grave and he walked this world for 40 nights, he spent 40 days in this glorified body. Nobody recognized him. Are you aware of that, that nobody recognized him? 
And some people make up these stories, well, because he had skin hair. No, they did not recognize him because they did not know him in the spirit. They did not know him in the spirit. They did not know him in the heart. They worked with him for three and a half years and they only knew him here. They had not had a revelation of him. Have you had a revelation of him? Have you? Have you had a revelation? Yes, I've, I've had. I, I've had. Have you today had a revelation of him? Well, not today. I've been very... No, I'm asking you. When you woke up today, did you or did you not have a revelation of him? Amen. Well, I've been so busy, Pastor. My... Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy breath from me. Is that a one-time prayer? Are you getting this? You know, there's lots of people watching me right now. The percentage of people listening to me and watching me that will get this is so small. I want a revelation of you, Jesus. For 40 years, the Israelites wandered in the wilderness for 40, 40 years, a distance of 18 miles. They wanted to go this way, and they wanted to go that way, and they wanted to go that way, and God says, no, go this way. And for 40 days, 40 years they wandered. Jesus spent 40 days on this earth trying to keep people from wandering. What was the only way that they would, he would keep people from wandering? Giving them the Holy Ghost compass. Can I hear an amen? amen. Do you think I should go home now? When I sat here Wednesday night and I shared you my story about preaching in the upper room in Israel, I can't even begin to tell you that glorious moment when I was asked to preach in the upper room in Israel where this church was birthed. This church was birthed in Israel in the upper room. Jesus said, on the day of Pentecost had fully come. Come on, take a look at it. Come on, Acts chapter 2. Come on. Yeah, come on. Are you there? Verse 1. Come on. Now when the day of Pentecost had fully come. What's the day of Pentecost? The day of deliverance. From where? From here. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Why were they all in one accord in one place? Because they were afraid of the Jews persecuting them. They did not want to be seen with this fruitcake they called Jesus, did they? And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. Wow. Ruach. A rushing mighty Ruach. And what did it do? It filled the whole house where they were sitting. Amen. And by the way, the mother of Mary was there too. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. Come on, read it out loud. Verse 4, verse 4. And they were all filled with Ruach. And what happened? And they began to speak with other tongues as the Ruach gave them utterance. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at the book of John, chapter 20. Come on, look at the book of John, chapter 20. And verse 22. Are you learning something? Yes. Are you filled with God's Ruach? Yes. 
or do you want to go home? And when, verse 22, and when he had said this, come on, he... And what did he say? Receive ye the... That word, listen to this. That word is hagios. Listen to this. Jesus said, receive ye hagios. You know what hagios means? The most holy thing. He said, receive. Are you awake? He said, receive the most holy thing. Amen. Wow. Amen. Word ghost is fuma. Fuma. A gentle blast or movement of air. Come alive. You see, for those dead duck Christians, the problem is you need CPR. I said you need CPR. You're dead. You're not breathing right. You're breathing in toxic air. Verse 23, watch this. He says, peace be with you. He breathes on them and watch what he says next. Whosoever sins remit and they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain and they are retained. Oh, pay attention to this. When you breathe, the cleansing breath of the Holy Spirit. You always, are you paying attention? Are you sure? When the breath or the Ruach of God breathes into your spirit, you always excel forgiveness. Forgiveness is a natural flow. You see, I hear people say all the time, I'll forgive you. But I'm never going to forget what you've done. Anybody said that? Yeah. Nobody wants to admit it. <laughs> loss. Loss of appetite for God. Loss of forgiveness for God is a result of spiritual deadness and improper breathing. Pastor, I just don't know why I'm not feeling it anymore. I think I need to go to a church or something. I'm just not feeling it anymore. No, sir. Got nothing to do with you not feeling it anymore. There's no more breath in you. Do you want to know why people say that? They oppose him. Stubborn people that oppose the Holy Spirit. Don't oppose the wind. Yield to the wind and come alive. I said come alive. Anybody been dead this week, a little bit dead? Two honest people over here. Thank you, Oliver, for pointing that out. All right. Anybody else besides Oliver been dead? <coughs> Jesus didn't just breathe on the disciples. Are you awake? Jesus didn't just breathe on the disciples. 2,000 years ago, every time you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, God Every time you forgive, God And every time you hate, 
you are suffocating your spirit. Please, please look at me. You're going along in life. Everything's going just right. You pray. You love. You go to church. You give. You, you, you tip the waitress 30%. Everything is going just great. Then all of a sudden one day, somebody from the church ticks you off and irritates you. And what do you start doing? You start suffocating yourself. And the life of the Spirit begins to be choked. How many people besides me have felt the relief when you have let it go? It's like all of a sudden you go, Every time you feel like you are suffocating, you say, Holy Spirit, breathe upon me that I would come alive in Jesus' name. Amen. That I would come alive in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? Now, in closing, I want to share with you a little truth and a little secret to help you with breathing the Spirit of God. It is so simple that the, that the elite and the intellectual and the smart may never catch this. So the other day, Wednesday, when I left here, I was so, as I said, on fire. And I, I got home and I said, oh, Holy Spirit, I just love you so much. Why, why don't people love you so much? He said, listen, I'm going to tell you a little secret. So I go in my room and I laid in my bed and I started to pray and I started to cry. He said, there's the little secret. He said, well, you didn't tell me anything. He goes, I didn't have to tell you anything. You went in your room to breathe me in. You knew where to find my breath. Where do we find his breath? I'll let you guys go without giving the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Please feel free to contact us at www.spiritlifeworshipchurch.com. Our phone number is 386-586-2202. And our service begins 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Can't wait to see you guys. God bless.